JBN, we keep you informed. Three farmers and a fisherman charged for assault. The Westmoreland Criminal Investigations Branch arrested and charged four men in relation to an incident which took place on Station Road, Little London, on Saturday, June 13. Charged with assault at common law, illegal possession of firearm, unlawful wounding, and malicious destruction of property are farmers. 28-year-old Kevin Leslie, 22-year-old Nicholas Swaby, and 27-year-old Gary Swaby, and Fisherman, 30-year-old Garrett Swaby, all of Revival District, Westmoreland. Reports are that about 4.30 p.m., two men were riding on a motorcycle when they were ordered to stop by four men who drove up beside them in a motor vehicle heading in the same direction. The men allegedly pointed a gun at the men on the motorcycle before using the vehicle to hit the motorcycle, causing it to crash. They then exited the vehicle and advanced towards the injured men before using the gun to further inflict wounds to the men. One of the men managed to escape and called the police. The accused men were arrested and charged on Wednesday, June 17. Their court date is being finalized. Sniffer Dog Ray finds drugs at airport. A team from the K-9 and Narcotics Divisions seized a pound of cocaine at the Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston on Tuesday, June 16. Reports are that about 3.20 p.m., a K-9 team with Sniffer Dog Ray was conducting security checks in the cargo area of the airport. During the checks, Ray alerted the officers to a package, and when it was searched, it was found to contain cocaine. The cocaine has an estimated street value of more than $600,000. Investigations are ongoing. Veterans take charge of education and labor ministries. Once ring fence without portfolios in the office of the Prime Minister, veteran politicians Carl Samuda and Mike Henry have been given a second wind with full appointments to the respective portfolios of education and labor. The endorsement by Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Wednesday comes in the sunset of both men's political careers. While the rationale for the Prime Minister's decision was unclear, neither Samuda, 78, nor Henry, 85, has indicated an intention to step aside from parliamentary representation. Samuda was given oversight of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information following the resignation of Royal Reed in March 2019 amid corruption allegations. Holness announced Samuda's promotion while addressing a meeting of the Council of the Caribbean Maritime University on Wednesday. Opposition spokesperson on education Peter Bunting and the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA President Owen Speed, both welcomed the appointment of the minister. The unorthodox night watchman arrangement for the last year and a half was really quite unsatisfactory, Bunting said yesterday. He further said, it is unfair to the stakeholders in the strategically important education sector and uncharitable of the Prime Minister to place Minister Samuda in such an awkward position in the evening of his ministerial career. Speed had been calling for the selection of a full-time education minister since his appointment as JTA president in August 2019. The teachers, the union boss, said that he hopes that it will not just be the ceremonial naming of a minister, but that he will be properly resourced and given autonomy to lead in formulating and guiding the implementation of policies. The JTA president added that Samuda has the full support of the association, noting that the next two months will be critical in refining plans for the full reopening of schools in September. Schools were closed in mid-March because of coronavirus containment measures. We are willing to work along with him and his team to ensure that the future of Jamaica, our children, are well taken care of, Speed said. And his appointment to the Labour and Social Security portfolio takes effect today. He replaces Shahini Robinson, who lost her battle with cancer on May 29. Vice President of the Jamaica Federation of Trade Unions, Granville Valentine, congratulated Henry on his appointment but admitted that he was caught off guard. I think the entire trade union movement will be surprised at this announcement, Valentine said. It must be disappointing for the state minister. Xavier Main was worked tremendously well with the unions and for some time was in charge of the ministry by virtue of the illness of Minister Robinson. Valentine said that the ministry was a key organ of the state that should be handled with care. 
we have established an excellent relationship with the state minister. We had a wonderful relationship with the former minister, and we believe that for continuity, it would have gone that way, he said. But that's the call of the prime minister, and he knows best what he's looking for. 71-year-old George Williams a step closer to prison release. For the first time in 48 years, George Williams had his day in a court of law yesterday. Bearded and sporting short dreadlocks, the 71-year-old, dressed in a white t-shirt and cocky pants, walked self-assuredly into the St. Catherine Circuit Court and stared engagingly at Justice Stephanie Jackson Aisley. The murder accused, who has spent half a century in prison without a trial, will appear next Wednesday when it is anticipated that he will be released into the custody of his family. Williams, who is incarcerated at the St. Catherine Adult Correctional Center, sat quietly and only rose when he was asked by the judge to stand. The now septuagenarian was arrested and charged with the murder of a man in July 1970, but the then 20-year-old was declared unfit to plead, said his attorney at law, Isaac Buchanan. Justice Jackson Hazley, after hearing the application brought by his attorney, ordered the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, to make a decision as how to proceed with the matter no later than next Wednesday. The DPP was given such time to find the court file for the case that is to answer. And this is important towards the result we seek, Buchanan said after the proceedings. He said that he was elated at Williams' imminent release, re-emphasizing that the bureaucratic lag should have never happened. Williams has been in prison from before I was born, so one cannot imagine what he has been through, Buchanan said. He is one of seven mentally ill men identified in the Independent Commission of Investigations report who have each spent at least 40 years in prison awaiting trial. Buchanan said that Wednesday's hearing was a step in the right direction and that he would hope that this case would give guidance to other counsel to volunteer and identify our brothers and sisters who have been lost in penal institutions. Buchanan said that Williams, 71, was shocked when he heard that he had been summoned to court. He was in awe and said that he too was happy to have had his day in court, the attorney noted. Justice Jackson Hazley also ordered that a social inquiry report be done on Williams' family to ensure that they can provide satisfactory accommodations. Williams' relatives, brother Aldrin Jones and Jones' niece Pamela Green, who were both present in court, were told to facilitate access to an independent psychiatrist. I think the judge was fair and she recognized the urgency and importance of the matter and in the interest of justice and for George himself that all things are in place for his release, said Buchanan. Portmore City Council and Magnum refurbish elderly woman's home. One elderly resident of the community of Old Britain in Portmore, St. Catherine, got an unexpected gift as the 2020 hurricane season kicks into high gear. Corporate giants J. Ray and Neville, through its Magnum tonic wine brand, teamed up with the Portmore City Council to refurbish the house of former sugar worker Hopi Greensword. The refurbished house was handed over to a grateful Greensword on Monday. We were able to help an old lady in Old Britain. She was living in a half-finished house that was covered with a tarpaulin, and we took two weeks to renovate the facility with a proper roof, furniture, and fixtures. It was a project that was very dear to my heart, and I would like to thank Magnum Tonic Wine Brand for stepping up to assist, said Mayor Leon Thomas. With the assistance of Torpedo Loans and the Kiwanis Club of Portmore, the Good Samaritans installed a new roof, replaced the windows, constructed a paved walkway and a new fence, installed a new bathroom, and appointed the house with new furniture. During a tour to hand out COVID-19 relief packages in St. Catherine last month, the team from Magnum, Tonic Wine, and Portmore City Council first recognized the plight of Green Sword, an elderly resident who had suffered a stroke years ago and who was living in a dilapidated house in Old Brayton. Thomas committed to helping Greensword to move out of the house that was without a proper roof and had no indoor plumbing. Magnum also committed a sum of $200,000 to the project 
and added that it would provide Green Sword with groceries for a period of 12 months. Portmore Clifton Quarry Hill Charity Group, Council Anthony Wint and the Member of Parliament for South St. Catherine Fitzjackson also played key roles in the philanthropic effort. We completed it just in time for the peak period of the hurricane season, so that's great news, Mayor Thomas said. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.